Tonight we continue our series of segments with candidates in this year's election for Boston City Council. The election today is November 8th. Our guest is one of seven people competing for the four seats at large. We'd like to welcome Sean Ryan. Thanks, Chris. It's nice to be back again. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Sean, for those of you who, who haven't followed you in past elections, uh, tell me a bit about your background and what you've done lately. Sure. Well, I'm uh, born and raised Bostonian, grew up in Jamaica Plain. I attended uh, public schools for the entirety of my youth. Starting at the age of four, I went to school in Roxbury at the William Monroe Trotter School. Then I went to the Hennigan and on to the Martin Luther King School in Dorchester before I went to Latin and on to Harvard where I studied music. I'm a musician, a uh, pianist, as well as an orchestral conductor and singer. Uh, and I've been teaching in the public schools as a music teacher. I am a member of the Boston Teachers Union and I am trying to be the honest uh, voice for long overdue school reforms and reforms that now it seems as though most of the political class, at least in theory, agrees that these reforms should take place. But I think they should take place uh, a bit faster because, you know, we're dealing with people's children here. Uh, people aren't willing to wait for a few years. Uh, they want what they want now if they're going to patronize the public schools. And so what I'm trying to do is be that voice for what I hear the people saying they want in a public school. Now, interesting, uh, I've seen the photo of you holding your teacher's union card, but you're not endorsed by the union. <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't take it as a, as a knock on me. I mean, there's two other uh, teachers union members who are both running uh, for city council this year. We've got Suzanne Lee over in District 2, and then we've got Chanel Parker over in District 7. And they're both card-carrying uh, BTU members as well, but neither one received the endorsement. Uh, and, you know, to be quite frank, not all teachers feel the same way about uh, what the problems are in the schools. And so I don't necessarily agree with the union leadership on every point. And, you know, I think that's most likely why uh, they haven't endorsed me. But we're talk, talk about the things that the, uh, at least the school department is trying to get out of the teacher's contract. Uh, more time, um, more pay raises pegged on student performance, and maybe more flexibility in assignments. Are, are those things that, that they ought to be going after? Yeah, those are all steps in the right direction. Uh, but what I see many of the reforms that we've had lately, what I see them as representing is just more band-aids. And I'd prefer to address the root problem in the schools. And it's my personal opinion that the root problem is, is that when you don't cater uh, to the preferences of the parents, when you just tell them what to do, uh, a lot of people don't care for that kind of approach, especially people who are in the middle and working classes. And since we've been continuing to drive out the middle and working classes over time, and this includes people of all backgrounds, ethnicities, and neighborhoods, uh, you know, you're continuing to see the enrollment uh, numbers fall in the public schools, even to this day. And that's going to create a school system in which there's instability, because you'll have to close a school, or you may have to combine them. And then it brings up some of these issues, uh, some of which we've, we've been talking about over the course of this campaign season. You know, what do you do when you close a school? Well, uh, talk about uh, another problem, uh, violence in the neighborhoods. Uh, the number of homicides and shootings this year is pretty much where it was last year. So yeah. what do you do about this lack of improvement? Well, we have a social problem that we're trying to deal with, and it has to do with, with drugs and addiction and the related uh, black markets, as well as the violence that's associated with those black markets. Nothing has changed over the past year. We haven't started allocating dollars away from a sort of criminal justice uh, uh, a criminal justice emphasized strategy to work through these addiction problems. So we do not need to be spending all the money we're spending on putting people in jail, on pushing them into the criminal justice system, on giving them criminal records, even though you know, many people haven't engaged in any violence despite you know, getting mixed up in drugs. We need to completely overhaul our approach. I'm not uh, you know, saying I'm a luminary or this is nothing new. I mean, I just happen to watch PBS like many people probably do. And uh, I'm trying to draw the parallels between what we saw uh, when alcohol was prohibited and what we're seeing now when all sorts of different drugs are prohibited. I don't see a huge qualitative or moral distinction between some of the drugs that are legal and some of them that are illegal. And in fact, legal drugs are abused at a, at a pretty high rate in some of our neighborhoods too, as many Bostonians will tell you. So whether the drug is legal or illegal is, is largely irrelevant when it comes to actually what's going on on the ground and the problems we're having with addiction. We don't have enough money to just keep throwing more Band-Aids on. We have to cut some funds in places where they're not working, and then we have to reallocate the money towards better solutions. Uh, I was at the uh, Occupy the Hood event Friday night in, near W Square. At least a couple of candidates for council were there, and other people, uh, candidates and incumbents, were not there. Um, yes. What's your take on this? 
Well, I did stop by Occupy the Hood. I know some of the organizers pretty well just from being around the neighborhood, and I like to see things with my own eyes. I've been down to Boston, uh, Occupy Boston rather, five times now, and I made sure to stop by on the night of the mass arrests because I wanted to see how the police would handle it. And in fact, they handled it pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, but at Occupy the Hood, well, it was interesting. I mean, I, I, uh, I made sure to visit the website uh, of Occupy the Hood, and I encourage everybody else to visit the website. What struck me was that there were certain rules of engagement that the Occupy Boston protesters were being encouraged to follow uh, during their time spent there in Dudley Square and Roxbury. And uh, I found those rules to be actually uh, somewhat alienating to myself personally, and I think that in a movement where you are claiming to be representing the best interests of 99% of the population, you shouldn't be pushing people away because they may not come from your neighborhood or they may not share your skin color. It's all about common goals, and you don't even have to share the exact same principles with somebody in order to form a coalition against a, you know, a particular social problem. So. Uh, I thought it was interesting, but I think if the movement is going to uh, be strong going forward, you have to be inclusive rather than exclusive. In one of your past campaigns, you also talked about some uh, very dramatic change with regard to uh, the Boston Redevelopment Authority and their power to regulate development. Um, are you still pretty much uh, in that direction? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not as much development going on right now. Everybody knows that. My, my brother happens to work in the construction industry, and his particular company's laid off 40% of their workers. Except for downtown, maybe. Well, downtown, there's some development going on. I mean, I, I don't, I mean there's a hole in the ground down in downtown crossing that was supposed to get developed. Uh, but, yes, I have not changed my, my positions because I, I still see the Boston Redevelopment Authority as a bureaucracy that no longer serves the purpose for which it was intended. It's not clear you know, what the purpose really is, and many people think that it's not solving a purpose. Many people think that the BRA is a politically controlled uh, you know, bureau, which it is, and many people want a much more, uh, more well-tailored system of zoning regulations to fit each neighborhood so that they're approved by the neighborhood and so that when you're going to develop, and this isn't just for large-scale projects too, if you want to do a small-scale project on your house, it's also very difficult to get through the, the regulations and uh, the waivers that are often necessary because of um, you know, these antiquated and outdated zoning rules. All right. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks. Candidate for Boston City Council at Large, Sean Ryan. Election Day is November 8th.